Warning. The following podcast contains explicit language, honest opinions and a sense of humor. Welcome to the Brothers Take. Hello everyone and welcome back to our podcast. I'm Chris, joined by my brothers Adam. Hello. And Eric. Hello. That's how we overcome that problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we are back in the room to talk. How many more. episodes did that take? I don't know. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how many? I'd love to go back and see at what point did we even have an actual intro? Because like, I remember, I think the first one ever, it was just, uh, um, oh, hi, guys, and uh, welcome to a podcast that we're going to talk about stuff and stuff. Cry. <laughs> uh, good. Please listen. <laughs> we are back in the room to talk more about video games. And in this episode, uh, following on from our last episode where we talked about the Game Award, we'd actually, we had just recorded it and just edited it and scheduled it to, ready to go. And then the Game Awards tweeted a new category. And we were like, what the fuck? But it's a cool category. I don't think it's an official category. I think it's just like one for the people to kind of to vote in on over Twitter mainly. Yes. Yeah, um, go through DM, DMing. Which yeah. is a weird way of doing it, actually. I, yeah. I feel so sorry for the, whoever has to look after the Twitter account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be nuts. And people might just spam the hell out of it. Um, but the Twitter read, what's your most anticipated game? And then listed off a few games, and we'll get to that when we're, when we're talking about it. But we've decided then to do sort of a follow-up to uh, our last episode, where we will, we will look at those games and, and see what our most anticipated game is out of that list, and then talk about our most anticipated games in general coming 2021, and maybe even beyond. What games are we particularly looking forward to as we look forward to the next gen of gaming? Um, and then there's two games from the nominations in the Game Awards that we have since been playing. Uh, so that's what we are like currently playing. And we're going to give our thoughts on those now, now that we're actually playing them. Um, I know that at the time of recording, Adam had played quite a bit of Spider-Man Miles Morales, but I had only just started it. I've now played more of it. And Eric has since been playing Hades. Yeah. So we're going to get some impressions uh, of both games. <laughs> so I think we'll do those first and then we'll go on to okay. most. Because that's like what we're doing now and then we'll look to the future. What are we looking forward to in the future? Uh, so that's what we're going to be talking about. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can join in on discussion by jumping into the comments below to let us know what you think of either of those games if you've been playing them or have played them. And also to let us know what games you're most looking forward to in the coming years. Um, pro- there's probably a big focus on 2021 because those ones are you know, uh, confirmed and are coming. And then if you're listening to us on audio platforms, you can get in touch on our social medias, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Brothers Take. Just let us know what you think of those games and what games you're looking forward to. So, without further ado, let's talk video games. Pretty sure that's someone else's tagline. Oh shit! <laughs> We're gonna get sued. Right. That's it. Demonetized. No, no, that's it. Cancel, brother. Yeah, we're, it's like we're, we're making zero money. We're gonna end up having to pay back money. <laughs> yep. we, well, that is how suing works. <laughs> no, it's a demonetization, though. Whose catchphrase is it? Do we know? Or does it just sound familiar? Um, definitely sounds familiar. Yeah, I don't know whose it is. It could be, I mean, to be honest, there's probably 3,000 people who yeah, yeah, would say that. Uh, I will never say it again. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Okay, so why don't we start Let's off with... Let's uh... engage in some discussion about the <laughs> video game platform. Well, why do, yeah, we should just say let's engage every time we start. Let's engage. Do you? <laughs> Music starts. <laughs> Damn. Um, but yeah, no, let, let, let us engage, actually. Let's start with uh, Eric. Know, You've been playing Hades. Hades ever since we talked about how many times it's been nominated yeah. in the Game Awards, which was in most was... categories. <laughs> yeah, so I decided, sure, might as well give it an old go. You know, I got, actually, last night, because you know, I, I think I was telling the news, right? So Hades is, is a great game. 
if you just want to die over and over again. If you're wanting, like, it, it's a great game for Hannibal Lecter or something like it. Just will torture you over and over again. So if you're in a bit, if you're a bit of a masochist, I'd recommend playing it. Like, <laughs> good crack. Like, uh, which is but, more like, punishing though? Is that or or like the Souls style games? I think that. Yeah. The yeah. Hades is. Is it yeah. because it makes you go to the very start yeah, all over I got, again? I got, I got out last night. All right, I got out. Then there was the last boss. And I was like, oh, okay, let's do this. Let's do this. He, the last boss then killed me. Start mm. the whole thing again. And it's that. It's that. Like, at least with Dark Souls, you just go back to the last bonfire with... Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, like, it's, that, that is the go back. game mechanic, though, isn't it? It's like... Yeah. Um, the rogue-style games, like, that's that's where... That's yeah. the thing. But that, 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 yeah, but that's what I'm saying though. If you really enjoy that that punishment of having to you know do the same thing over and over again, I'd really recommend it. The 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 designs for some of the stuff is really, I think, interesting, and some of the kind of choices that they they have for particular characters, like yeah. because there is with some of them, it almost feels a little like the Disney Hercules sort of film, like real oh, kind, right. yeah, like, yeah. real kind of childish or real kind of like um like Dusa. Well, that's what they call her Medusa, isn't it? But she's just a floating head who, like, cleans the house. So she's, like, the maid of the place. But she's, like, real, <laughs> real like, nervous and stuttery with you. And she's always, like, sweating if you talk to her, like. Because she's, like, <laughs> real kind of, like... That's hilarious. <laughs> I just think it's hilarious. And then you have, like, Hypnos is, like, always asleep. So whenever you go talk to him, he's like, whoa, go, God. And he like, wakes up. And then the minute you're done talking to him, he's, like, back to sleep again. Because he's sleep incarnate. So that's what he does, like. Yeah. Uh, so I just think it's really, and then they have various characters. Like you meet Sisyphus, the guy who rolls the boulder. Yeah. So when you meet him, he's like, oh, I haven't really seen any of the Furies around. Thank God, I get a break from rolling this boulder. You know. So they kind of do play a lot of the myths into then the characters and having the various conversations. But the, do you know what the one of the biggest things for it was the talking mechanic? Yeah. Every time you die, you come back and have something new to say. I am starting to notice that with some of the some of the bosses, but I suppose it could only go so far. They're starting to repeat themselves. Oh, okay. Sometimes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They do. They do eventually run out. But the it's game, that's like the game is saying you're not supposed to die this much. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it went on for quite a while before I actually started hearing any new dialogue. But really, really good. It's kept me going, which is great. And I did get out, and I still have to do it all again. How because... long does it take? Because obviously, and like not how long is the game? Because that all depends on when you actually get out, right? But I'm just wondering, say someone was uh, magnificent and they did not die the first time, even though I know you will, right? It's nearly designed for you to die and have to try again. Yes. You know, you won't ha- you won't be strong enough or whatever. Um, but how long does it take to do like a playthrough? Right, so I died 26 or 7 times before i got out oh no but i just mean the, and like took, if you were to get out without dying i know but i'm i'm, I'm going, going to like to, with oh, all right. of them right? so i did like it so when you do actually get it when you defeat the last boss it does let you know so it took me about over 40 minutes to do it in 27 28 tries okay okay so if you I'm... narrowed that down it's actually really short yes yeah yeah if you're doing it in one go um, so the length of the game is based on dying and trying and dying and yes. trying and dying and trying. Yeah. Okay. Cool. But they're um, they're repeat mechanic. Like the fact that because you're a god and because you're already dead, you can't die. And all the bosses you're fighting are beings that are technically already dead. So that's why they keep coming back because they can't actually die when you're in the underworld, which I think is a really good mechanic. I've seen a lot of the the art style and the interactions and stuff, but I haven't actually seen the combat so what's the combat like uh it kind of feels a little bit like um like a blend between devil may cry's really fast slasher kind of and diablo's combat because you're looking down on them you have all the yeah, enemies look a bit like diablo actually yeah that's what that's what it's like and then you have particular you get particular blessings from the gods which can give you uh, buffs or abilities that can help you throughout it right um, so that's so because it has the speed of Devil May Cry with then the more mechanics of um, Diablo, mm. and then you have a particular set of weapons as well that you get to choose. 
And is the whole thing like tongue in cheek? If you know what I mean? Like is it is it kinda humorous more so than anything else? Like is it kinda Uh well it's, yeah, the, really it depends on the character. You know what I mean? So like like I was saying, when you're talking to, to Dusa, like they really kinda decide to take the piss out of that one or or with <laughs> like Orpheus Orpheus looks straight he looks straight up like um Edward Scissorhands. That's what he looks like and that's the way he talks like and he doesn't ever like we can't like sing or something, but he's all like gently spoken. But then you have Achilles, who's like this this badass character who's trained you how to fight. Like so, they kind of decided to sort of play to the to the kind of the stereotype of the character, I suppose. While with some of them had a little yeah. bit more fun with it. Like Zeus is the big talking overlord sort of person. Well, Dionysus is kind of like the uh, almost like the jock or something, or not that the the kind of. And like, oh, totally, dude. Like, how's it going, man? Oh, you want some wine? <laughs> like, that's kind of what Dionysus is like. <laughs> that's hilarious. But I actually, I love the the take on Medusa, calling her Dusa and everything. But, you know, like, having her real timid and shy, because, you know, typically Medusa is supposed to be sort of this, like, seductress. And you want to it's look terrible. at her, but looking at her will kill you. And, uh, uh, you know, so having her as this sort of, like, <laughs> really, like, shy timid like housekeeper it's kind of really funny <laughs> um i'm curious is um a- after like playing it hmm. do you think it has you know because now you have a better impression of it do you think it has a stronger chance of winning some of those categories it was nominated for many um i i it's definitely going to win at least one I can't specifically say which one that is because the game awards do often surprise me. Yeah. But it, it, it'll definitely win one. But I think I did say originally that I thought I was going to get game of the year. Yeah. Yeah. But now I actually don't think so. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, just based on the competition it's up against or? Yeah. Based on the, so now that I play it, now that I know more what it's like based on the competition, based on even more people's reaction when it comes down to the awards and what people want to win. Yeah, I, I don't think Hades, uh, I think it has less of a chance. But I think I was basing that off of the fact that Sekiro won it, like, and, like, Dark Souls right. won it. that was a little bit surprising. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, like, I, th- I think I was basing that, well, it's because it's that style of game, it's obviously going to win, but then I didn't really take into account, I suppose, that cr- a lot of critics love, like, The Last of Us Part 2 or so is this episode? Sorry, is this episode going to be coming out after the game awards? Because I just think it like in terms of like. Oh, no, I, pre- I, pre- I think this awards. is. Okay. The week of the game awards. Okay. So it just depends on when people listen to it, really. But I, th- I believe this is the week of the game awards. But yeah, it might sound none of it, right? Uh, if you're listening to this after the game awards, this is obviously um, this recorded, was recorded beforehand. before. <laughs> yeah. So we don't have knowledge of what has won yet. <laughs> um. So I suppose, uh, like, just to keep a question, uh, um, does it deserve to be in its categories? The categories yeah. that it was nominated for. Yeah, I think it does. And should people play it? If you really like rogue style games, yeah, okay. they really should. Because yeah, see, that's that, that like turned me off. Um, I know. I, 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 I could never get into rogue games. Um, like, you know, a lot of them get praised. I'm, I'm really surprised about how many people really love that type of game. And even the Souls-style games. Like, because I, I can't, I don't like them at all. Um, But it always surprised me how popular they are. That's why I was shocked that Sekiro won last year. Like, I was right. really shocked. But I thought it was quite a niche game genre. I didn't think it was as popular as, as it is. I think it's just, it might be the simplicity of the the game like you're just kind of straight into it and then it's replayability but i think as well i don't think sekiro just won on like kind of difficulty alone or like how it plays like i i've have you seen the serpent adam in sekiro yeah like that's incredible just shit like that i think there's that's amazing. The way it moves is that that alone. I was like, that's fucking unbelievable. If I had seen that before, I'd have been like, oh, Sekiro's unreal. <laughs> like I only saw that um a couple of weeks back. Uh, I think I was just looking at, you know, one of those. I might have been watching Mojo or something. You know those videos that 
compiled yeah. clips of different things. Yeah. And I showed a clip of the fucking serpent from Sekiro. And I was like, whoa. Like, I thought the world leader from God of War was like the coolest snake I'd ever seen on screen. But look at that thing. I don't know ah, if they no, just the, the, wor- the world serpent <laughs> from God of War is still uh, the coolest. Pretty sure that's what she's in. Snake. Well, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. Ah, my camera Wait, fell. There we go. Um. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <from> that. <laughs> um. How's the voice acting actually? Because there was um one of the nominations was for like. There was one of the guys, Logan Voice for Hades. Hades was for, in best yeah, Logan Logan Cunningham for for Hades. Um, they're they're adequate. They're fine. They they serve their purpose. Nothing really, I think, absolutely mind blowingly. You like, don't. All, like you don't think Harry s- play that now that he has a better chance than say Ashley or Laura Bailey or. No, no, no. I don't say that because it's still very like um. Apart from the few little characters that they took a lot of liberties with, they're all still very typical. Like Hades sounds like a big evil overlord. Zeus sounds like the 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 kind of godfather sort of like you know the kind of like I have the big booming voice because I'm Lord King of Olympus. Like they all like a lot of them still have their very stereotypical voices. Right. So I I don't really think no um any of them really are gonna win. Like, okay. I, don't, I don't think it's going to win for that. Okay. It's surely, well, it's, it's got to get best indie, right? It's going to have to. Oh, it has to get best indie. Yeah. yeah. I mean, come on. If it's up there in Game of the Year nominations, then it's, it fucking has to get it's best gonna indie. It's going to get best Otherwise, indie, it's yeah. going to be like, wait, what? Which <laughs> chunk Yeah, you could. You could, really could. It could okay. win Game of the Year and then not win best indie. <laughs> that would just be, it'd be like, lads, what is your judging criteria? <laughs> What is the criteria here? I actually um I was watching one of Alana Pierce's videos and I remember her saying that she's she's up for one, but um she said that uh, she has been on the panel of of yeah. judges before a few times. So she's given I a think. bit of insight yeah. into kind of how it works and stuff. Um, so I thought that was really interesting, and she it was just interesting that at the time she commented that she thinks Hades has a real strong chance. Which I thought was really, really interesting. Oh, um, that's interesting. See, I'm wondering because, like, when did it release? Um, was it like during the summer or something this year? Like, it's been a while back that I was talking to my mate who had played it. So okay, because I was just wondering if there's like a bit like Among Us at the moment. Is there like a honeymoon period with it? Um, like maybe. Because I always find like games like like Five by Seven Remake, for example. I'm surprised that's even in there because I I. It ends to the games kind of towards the beginning of the year, just kind of forgotten about, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you kind of already know as well. You're like, um, like if Jedi Fallen Order was to get any categories, like it'll be very few because it's like, oh yeah, that game. Yeah, yeah. When did I play that again? Well, it has yeah, really yeah. strong competition this year, doesn't it? I mean, well, that is what like, I it was never going to be up there for game of the year or anything, but I, d- I think I did say there was like one or two other categories that I feel like, not that I would have won, but that um, it at least should have been considered sure. for. You know, it's sort mm-hmm. of pushed to the wayside there. That had it been in last year's conversation, it would have been in more categories. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, did that get delayed? Is that what? No, it didn't get delayed. It's just it, the way they... Um, trying to time it with the whole Star Wars it's... buzz, right? Uh... Skywalker I don't know. Like I, I, I imagine like games they just release when they, you know, feel like they want to. I guess, but in terms of the game awards, uh, there has to be a certain period where the there's a deadline for when the nominees. Oh, I know that. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Nominations. So it just yeah. didn't make the cut that way. But no, I wasn't delayed. I don't think. No, just... no, I was just wondering. Um, but I suppose as well, cause like. You would be a little bit raging if you had just missed the mark, wouldn't you? You'd be a little bit like, ah, fuck, man, we could have been... That's why there's kind of a conversation as to, like, why isn't the Game Awards in January? Yeah. To talk about the previous year? Yeah. It's a good point. I, I, I would agree. So that it. way, like, everything that year can be celebrated. and Piled together, yeah. 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 There's a very good point. 
uh, I would definitely agree with that because then nothing can be like because even like so now Cyberpunk is going to be in the conversation next year. Yep. That's so it'll be going up against year. you know uh, of War and, and we'll be talking ah, yeah, but, uh, we'll yeah, be talking we'll about next year that. shortly. But um, okay, so then another game that was in a couple of categories. Um, I think it was in best action adventure and best performance, if I remember. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. that we have now since been playing myself and Adam have been playing this so Spider-Man Miles Morales um, Adam you've had it longer than me um, this one is obviously a little bit more um, cinematic driven yeah in a sense so what I mean is like don't really want to get into spoilers I don't think because mm-hmm. I, I, I feel like a lot of people this is going to be their first PS5 game and that's just because even though Demon Souls looks better, uh, that's a fact. <laughs> it does. And what I mean is like graphically, not necessarily like your gameplay preferences are your own. Um, it's Spider Man is way more accessible. Yeah, I think more people are going to play Spider Man, and therefore, and because not everyone has a PS Five yet, um, that's going to come down the line. I definitely don't want to talk spoilers because even though it's been out a little while now. Uh, there's no way everyone that wants to play it has played it. You know, mm-hmm. it's not like The Last of Us where we were all on that playing field and we all kind of had it at the same time. Um, so, but just yeah, just kind of general impressions of it and then things you like from it that aren't necessarily spoiler story okay. spoilers. Yeah. Um, it's like I, I think it's probably the the best game to launch the console with. Like, obviously, you can still get it on PS4, which is what I was mostly playing it on. Um, I was playing on PS4, and then I decided to stop and wait till I get the PS5 so I could finish it on that. Right. Um, the I heard a few people say that it's better than the first one, and I don't agree with that at all. Um, okay. and it doesn't feel like a DLC. That's the thing. Like, it doesn't actually feel like it. It it feels above a DLC. Definitely, it's definitely a standalone game. Um, and the combat is better. That, that I would agree with. The The fighting mechanics in this game is way better than the first one. But just overall, I I just preferred the... I preferred the first game in terms of how it felt and the introduction of characters. Like, there's a lot more characters in the first one, and I really appreciate oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but it is a very good game. And yeah. It's a lot more kind of cinematic than I was expecting it to be. Mm. Um and it is it is very short, but my first time playing this, it didn't feel that way at all. I was actually surprised at the length of it. Right. It's because between missions, I took any opportunity I could to go and do Spider Man stuff, you know, like stop crimes and stuff. And I, I find a game like Spider Man and Batman that side quests don't feel like side quests they, you feel obligated to do them because you're a superhero you That's know you, you you want to do that stuff yeah um so that just prolongs the game and i just feel like if you rush through the main story you probably will be finished it in no time and i was you know i'm doing my second run at the moment and i find it like it it's very it rushes it a bit like the it's nearly cutscene after cutscene i think you'll get much more enjoyment out of it if you take the time and do all the side quest stuff in between the main missions i think you'll prefer the game that way um the score i thought was impressive yeah i I I thought the score was better than the first one i wouldn't say better because there's there's moments where i'm like i kind of miss the the main tune when you're swinging through New York in the first one. Because obviously I jumped the version as well. I didn't play much of it now. I just played uh, the taking out like the Kingpin at the start. Yeah, I think and... you showed like, a picture, didn't you, on Instagram? Yeah. Or yeah that was actually, like, I think it was, was like, the reflection on his floor. On his marble that, floor. That was it is beautiful. stunning. Like, when you switch beautiful. between the two, it's like, oh, my God. Wow. Well. Um, but the yeah the music when you're swinging through New York you're just kind of like this feels like Spider Man you know it's like <laughs> it, it makes just... you feel like Spider Man yeah. <laughs> classic I, I kind of miss that with Miles Morales but there are moments yeah. where that tune comes in and it's when Miles does something where he's kind of like 
you know, coming Spider-Man essentially, because this is a this is a story of like it's not an origin story, but it's uh, it's like him kind of perfecting his role, kind of is the is the game. Yeah. So like hints of it is there, and then it's almost like the building of the Fellowship theme kind of thing. It's like when he when he does like something like any any nails it as Spider Man, then the the Spider Man tune comes in and it's it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just liked I think during combat I thought the kind of hip hop inspired stuff really well, it worked. suits him, doesn't it? it really it does the character. Yeah, yeah, really does. And I also found there's a real great and it just for me it really worked. There's a great sense of community in this game. Like, I would even, have loved to have seen more of that, actually. I, I thought there was plenty of it, personally. Um, yeah. I absolutely love the... And I hope they bring it forward into the next game. The Friendly Neighborhood app. Yeah, that's a really great mechanic. I love that. So like, you swipe left on your touchpad, and it just brings up your list of side missions. Which, yeah. first of all, like even like... um. Like Ghost of Tsushima was something that I love. I love when side missions are not something that you have to travel the world looking for. I love when there's actually like a list of quests that you can tick and it's just it's like, today I'm going to do this, this, and this. Off I go. And you're like, woohoo, I, I'm not like wandering. I like It's cool if you find something like just through exploring and you're like, oh great, I didn't expect that and now I'm launched into something new. But it's also nice when there's like a list like of a to-do list for you of stuff you can actually go and do. The other thing is um, I I mean, I hate pointless side missions like go collect frogs or uh, go find someone's cats, right? Mm-hmm. But stuff like that works when you're Spider-Man. Go finding yeah. someone's cat works if you're Spider-Man, like really works. Especially because... at this point of Spider-Man. Yeah. yeah, you're a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. It's literally like just any like helping out in the neighborhood in any way possible, and then something big happens that yeah, like you know he's too young and not ready for, and yeah. trying to juggle. And they do a great job of Miles's character trying to juggle the responsibility of being Spider-Man. And it's like these moments where he's like trying to figure. It's like, well, what would he, what would the other Spider-Man do? Yeah, I love Which those type of moments. Really like the good. the dynamic between him and his friend, um, yeah. they're Can't actually keep... they're really good. Yeah. Um, it that no, that normally kind of is something that I I, I don't I don't really like in mm-hmm. whether it's movies or games is that kind of sidekick friend who you know generally it's like well why are you even here like I could literally do everything myself I've got superpowers you're just a dude with a computer kind of thing. But in this, it's like they really established that no, he does actually need him, mm-hmm. and he needs him for a lot more than just being the, the the friend on the computer. You know, there's there's moments where he does well, not it's not necessarily like he does heroic things, but he is needed in places that Miles can't be in two places at once, kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. So he's there for him for that kind of stuff, and I think they worked that they did that really really well they portrayed it really does, well does he kind of then replace like the do you get to play as him like kind of like the mj sections nope. in the first one no there's nothing no, like no, that you no, only play as miles yeah. yeah okay and i must say i really like the um the new abilities that miles has um yeah. like, like, i forgot the lightning ability and the invisibility um yeah. that stuff is like i used it a lot and it worked really well Um, it was flashy and enjoyable it's made me wonder because, like, you know, you learn from making new games and then you bring them forward yeah. to the next game, right? Like, it's the Friend and Neighborhood app I could see coming over to the next big Spider-Man game, yeah. right? Um, Which they haven't forgotten about, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, like, I just wonder, it's like, so Peter's obviously not able to go invisible, or he doesn't have lightning powers, so what's going to happen there? I have a feeling you're going to play as the two of them. Yeah, I think that's probably the right thing to do. Would you be interested in like um, drop in, drop out co-op? Co-op, yeah, where you play one plays as. Do you know what? Depending on how, like, some of these other games that are coming out that are doing that go, that might yeah. be what they do. They might do that. Cause, but it could be cool, like just kind of really cool. swinging around New York with your with your buddy. Especially if it's like, you know, Miles, whoever spends Miles, like I'll go in invisible first, and then you come down and do yeah. your. Because, I mean, Spider-Man has way more gadgets. 
Yeah, he does. That's the yeah. way it like that's the way it needs to be. If Miles has like, more abilities, but Peter has more gadgets. More gadgets yeah, yeah. 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 That'd actually be really cool. I'd be really okay with that. Um I do want Peter to have kind of the main role in the next one anyway, uh, just because you know, it's really his rogues gallery that yep. we're gonna be facing and he has a yep. longer history with them and stuff. Um plus just from playing the first Spider Man, um, that end credits scene in the first Spider Man. Yeah. You know, we want to see that come to fruition and that really is a Peter Parker story. Yeah. Um really, really looking forward to where they're going. <laughs> like I'm like, come on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I only have two criticisms about the Miles Morales game actually. Um, but they're they're quite small. One of them is, and I really didn't think it would bother me that much. Uh, I'm not one of those people that jumps on the bandwagon here, but I I couldn't help it. The Peter's face, I I know I, can't, I really like, don't like it. I don't like it either. And I don't it like it shouldn't. I was, really actually, I was going to ask like, well, how like how was that for you? I still I'm not used to it still. I didn't like warm up. There's to it moments all. like I I've seen even clips with the remaster that I haven't actually got to yet, but it's yeah. kind of like side by side comparisons on YouTube, and it's it is genuinely worse. Not because the face has changed, but the animation has changed too. There was subtleties in the original, yeah, within the face animation that isn't in the remaster with this new face, yeah. And I just don't buy their reasoning for it. Like, they keep saying this is they wanted a better face model to match the voice actor. See, I don't think it matches surely, him at all. Surely you just use the voice actor then if you wanted a better face to match him. You just use his face. Yeah. Like, I, I, there's yeah. something up, and I'm wondering if they're trying to distance themselves from the original. Um, the, the, the original face model or something. I don't know. If I don't know something... why. Yeah, maybe there's something. I don't know. But, um, I, I do think that the original guy looked like just really looked like Peter Parker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, he had like kind of the the best features of each, didn't he? Yeah. Kind of like thing, he kind of but... looked like it was weird. He kind of looked like the Andrew Garfield one, right? Yeah. He was kind of written to be like the Tobey Maguire one, but yeah. then he had some of the little gadgets and gizmos of the Tom Holland one. Like they had yeah. kind of taken inspiration from just Spider Man as a whole. Um, yeah. I do want to say that I do, I actually. I think Insomniac are doing better Spider-Man stories than the MCU are. Oh, definitely, absolutely. Uh, like I'm kind I just... of, it's I'm, it's kind of annoying now that Marvel couldn't just hand all of the game properties over to them because, yeah. like, currently the Avengers, obviously the Square Enix did, is doing horribly. Um, yeah, yeah. Lost so much money on it. <laughs> Can't believe that. And. Like, could you imagine if Insomniac had their hands on it? Or if they just gave it to so- uh, Sony and said, here, just find us the appropriate studios. Um, Because I would love for Insomniac to do a Daredevil game in that New York. Can you imagine? That would be fucking amazing. Because they well, already have, like, I'm starting some of the to wonder, because I, I did think about that the other day. I was like, like Daredevil would fit so well into a game. Like, it's kind of, it really feels like it's only a matter of time. I suppose the thing that limits Daredevil is he really has a dreadful rogues gallery. He really <laughs> has two or three decent Just villains. Just kingpin and be grand. Yeah, exactly. So, but I wonder, will they do, will they introduce Daredevil in the next game and then do with him what they've just done with Miles? Give him like a mini game kind of thing, cool. you know? Mm. Um, oh, but sorry, um, my other critique mm. is the price of the game. Now, I, it's not like, a, it's not a deal breaker because like I bought it and I don't regret buying it. But I do feel like it being what, 10 euro, $10, wherever you are, cheaper than, so. but it's like, you are right. It's not a DLC and that's not the way to think about it. It is a lot closer to say like Uncharted The Lost Legacy. It's that yeah. kind of a thing. And it's very similar to that length actually. Um, But in saying that I, when The Lost Legacy came out, it was like 40 quid. Yeah, and I feel like that's a fairer price, just for the the, how the much, content. How much was this? This was sixty. 60. So yeah, it's only a ten or okay. less than you know. I do think it's worth uh, if anyone hasn't picked it up yet and is thinking of picking it up. It is worth I think spending the extra twenty, so eighty quid, 
and you get the ultimate edition because you get spider-man remastered with that oh especially if you haven't got or yeah. played the first spider-man I, I, but I'll, even I'll, I'll even like because like, i haven't because for me like um i uh i had the original game but i didn't have any of the dlc that remastered one comes with all the dlc as well yeah so that's at least something that like although i've played the the first one before I can run through it and then play through the DLC that I've never played. Like for twenty quid, the extra, and you get all oh, that. Oh, like, 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 I, I, I think deal. it's worth picking that up. Yeah, yeah, that's way more worth it. You know what but I mean? Yeah, I do, I do think. Yeah, it is steep for, and it's only because it is the launch game. That's really it. Yeah, you I'm know? assuming you have no choice. You have to put up a Peter's face. You're not able to change it back at all. No, you can't, you can't, can't no. change it. No, no. and it, yeah. I'm sorry, it just doesn't look like that out of that head the other looks thing too is young that's the thing like that's, yeah you know the, the first one looks like he's been in the game long enough and you know he has put some of those the the, the members of the sinister six in the raft he hmm. did do that at some point this new peter face just doesn't like he doesn't need miles looks older than him yeah it's weird because then there's moments where he's like your mentor and it just yeah. looks like two kids hanging out as opposed to an like a college kid talking to a teenager, you know what I mean? It's just yeah, yeah. it doesn't it doesn't work. That's the, that's the truth, and it's not a deal breaker, but it has me worried about playing the but next. He's not full, really a college kid though. Game. He's he's like he's past he's college. college isn't he? now. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's intern, a researcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but then we we. It's about but nineteen. Then, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> then that job went. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I know. Look, there's some great moments. Uh, I agree with school. both of really... those critiques, all right. Um, but that's pretty much all I got. I really just, I really enjoyed the game. And then at one point, I remember because I'd only just started it, and I was like, "Oh, well, that's that's a bit on the nose." I was like, <laughs> "That's, I mean, come on now. I, 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 you think I'm stupid? I know exactly who that is." But then they didn't, and I'm not gonna say what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about because I was then, the same. Because yeah, yeah. I, I thought then they would play that up for a long time. And I was yeah, like, really? I mean, I'm not going to be surprised. And then they didn't. But they did a few other things. And I was like, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, okay. Okay. So by the end of it, I was like, you know what? I'm pretty happy. And there is an emotional weight to the story that's really good. Uh, I, he, I, I actually think it does have a really good chance. And we'll see what happens. I mean, this is, again, has been recorded before the Game Awards. I do think the game has a really good chance of winning that best action adventure. Um, really? In what it has, I still don't think he's going to win best performance. Oh, I'm actually surprised that he's but, n- even nominated, actually. But I think no, well, no, I'm not surprised he's nominated. I think he was really good. But um, I think he was good. But I uh, like, I just feel like that year, even um, like as little as Troy Baker was in Last Was Part Two, I think deserves that spot instead. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. And I, I know they don't want it to just look like I know. the Last of Us across the board, like. But well, I mean, I, I, I don't I think mean, his really performance it should be because even yeah. uh, your one who played Dina was really good. And then you know, like, there's plenty of people in the, <laughs> the Last of Us Part Two was a stellar cast, like you know what I mean? It was. Yeah, they did well. Fantastic. I just like I do think some of the so. the other choices are kind of questionable. Like I I think you know Jin Sky is good and all, but I still would put even like. Troy that Baker, dog. the dog from the last was part two. Oh, as well, Troy after. Baker is great in Miles Morales. Yeah, yeah he's, he's great. He's great. I think Eric saw that bit. He, uh, he yeah, I thought like, of it. I was like, you know, oh, look, it's there Troy. they are. There he is now. There he is, the shady businessman shaking your hand and going, yeah, I've got big plans for this place. And you're like, oh, but why don't you just have a name tag that says, hi, I'm dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he gets out of, but he actually, he no, out of no, land no, with all the high-tech <laughs> soldiers and it's like, oh, you're totally not the bad guy with those evil-looking soldiers behind you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he actually is... Um, he does play him really well, actually. Um, ah, yeah, sure. Sorry, they're not, not, not nominee-style, but he, he does play the part really well. It's Troy Baker. I mean... Yeah, there's not many I uh, like for roles he does that are bad, I do like. think that the, the role of Miles Morales was portrayed really, really well, but to me, it just wasn't kind of like a that's not what I remember from the game. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I hear you. That yeah, doesn't yeah. stand they, out to they, me. They should have probably another Last of Us character in there. And then probably, I think generally one of the actors from Bomb Seven Remake. 
after. Oh, that's shocking. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I feel, I definitely feel that way. Yeah, I feel like, that way. We're definitely not biased yeah. about this. No, not at all. No, it's not. It's it's just that when you're playing it, like that was one of the, the things way, that stood out. Yeah, when I, you know, what I think of like when I'm looking at these categories, it's like, well, does it deserve to be in there? Was if that that specific kind of category stood out to me in that game, like. When we looked at best score, like it was without a doubt Final Fantasy VII Remake because it was like yeah. that was the best thing about the game. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, so it was a ten out of ten. Yeah, I don't know if it was a ten out of ten for Eric because nothing gets a ten out of ten, but it was a no, ten no, out of ten. No, no, Eric. No. You're, you're wrong. <laughs> it's hard to beat perfection, you know. Um... <laughs> hard to even achieve that, but. So then, jumping off from the Game Awards and, and those games that we talked about, uh, we'll come back to this tweet now, um, which the Game Awards tweeted out. We would have included it had we got it before. Anyway, what's the most and what's your most anticipated game, right? So, obviously, in general, that could be there's many, many other games that aren't included on this list that we could talk about. But just first of all, let's look at this list. And we can say which one of them we are most anticipating, and then also which one we think people are most anticipating. And then after that, we could say it might be one of these games is actually just your most anticipated game for the next year or two. But there might be something that's not here that you are actually anticipating more. Okay, so what's your most anticipated game? The games that they listed are Elden Ring, Halo Infinite, Horizon Forbidden West, God of War sequel. I don't know they didn't call it Ragnarok. It's called Ragnarok. Yeah. Uh, Resident yeah. e- Evil Village and Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel. That's kind of sick. Did they not just really like, weird? Huh? I find it weird it. that it's like the, you know, we, we've seen Halo Infinite. We've seen uh, at least clips of Forbidden West and, and Ragnarok and Resident Evil. Elden Ring is so far away that it's like, why isn't like, I don't know, Elder Scrolls 6 in there or something like that? That's how fucking far away that is. I and think, yeah. Breath of the Wild sequel hasn't even been mentioned. Like, why? Is, that's, so, that's so out there. That's like kind of saying, oh yeah, well, there's Half-Life a, there's, 3. There's a, there's a demo for it. I downloaded the demo on the Switch. I haven't actually gotten around to play it. It's been busy with the Wild it is. sequel? Yeah, it's the, it's the one where you're playing the well, I'm assuming it's this one. It's where you play the Indians in the past before. It's like calamity is that not heroes. The, is that not the? Yeah, that's 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 warriors. That's, that's Hyrule warriors. That's not Breath of the Wild. But no, but no, it's it's set within that world. Yeah, no, it's Breath set in that world. world. That's not that's not what we're talking about here, though. Is that oh, just like that's out, so? Is that right? like a DLC type thing? No, no, no. That's so to um, speak. There's another kind of game called Hyrule Warriors, and it's kind of like. Uh, oh, I've I've seen that. It's like a it is a slasher kind of. Yeah, it's kind of like Dissidia based in Zelda world. Yeah, kind of like I that. And, but there's like oh, lots of yeah. enemies. Like uh, you're fighting yeah. within the battle, lots of enemies. And they decided to base the second one around the Calamity War, which is the Breath of the Wild. Right. Okay. Then why you call it Breath of the Wild sequel? Because surely because, the next because there's one no one name for it. That's what I'm saying. Like like that and, is actually and, such a well. They they, they just know they, there's going to be another Zelda game, and that's they what they're, that's called really the Zelda that's sequel. Right it might as well be Zelda Breath of the Zelda sequel. That one might as well just say another Zelda game. Yeah, is what yeah. it might as well say. It's like is that what? But what's weird to me is like which games they like. There's loads of other games that they didn't pick. But they put that there. Yeah, it is strange. Um, I think they're probably trying to, just if you look across the list there. For... Yeah, accommodate for like, so you've got, you know, um, Xbox, PlayStation exclusives. And then you got it. Oh, I get that. I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nintendo fans, you know. And then I think they put down Elden Ring because, again, it's a rogue style. It's going to be well, like We don't know next... that. We just, we can assume that it's a soul style game. Yeah. yeah, and then it's like written George R. R. Martin or something as part yeah. of writing it. But well, that's literally yeah. all you've got going for it. Like that's that's yeah. Just, there's nothing else about it that we know. Uh, it's just I think that's so it's I, weird that that's put there. So I'm assuming all three of us can mark the the first and last one off the list of most anticipated. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I, yeah, I'm not. I'm like, <laughs> for me, yeah, no, like no, I have. We know nothing I about them. More about them, like you know. No. Yeah. Um. 
Yeah, because like like okay, so Zelda is an awesome franchise, but it is hit. It's kind of like Final Fantasy. It's hit or miss. Yeah, it really depends on what they decide to do with it, um, you know, visually uh, and otherwise. But, um, of the ones that are there, Eric, which would be your most anticipated? Just of the ones there. It's got to be Halo Infinite, you know. That's like I've always been a huge, huge fan, you know. Played from the beginning. It's amazing. Uh, I don't know. See, because again, I have no no idea about Halo Infinite. We've only seen that one trailer, which is a bit kind of looked like every other Halo. So it's only between the three games, isn't it? For for you, oh, for me, anyway. Okay, sure. Yeah. Which is Horizon, God of War, and Resident Evil, and even at the only one that's actually given us really something to work off of is Resident Evil Village. Like a Horizon yeah. Forbidden West, like, sure shows a very that we, good trailer, but yeah. Do you not find that if it's a game you're anticipating, it's just one that you're looking forward to? Yeah. And it's not about like That's that's why I'd have to go for God of War. Yeah? Yeah. I'm and giving so, you guys like a roller coaster. i you don't know where I'm going with this. I don't know. I don't I mean, you don't even know no, where you're you, going you with don't, this. I don't know what you're talking no, about. No, no, I'd I'd have to say God of War. Because the minute when God come. of War Ragnarok, it was like, Oh, so many questions. Why are they calling it that? What's gonna happen? Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Is it gonna is it gonna be like a rogue style game? Because Ragnarok means rebirth i think or like cycled or something so that you're gonna die and that start again over and over again <laughs> do you think um i i have a feeling that just with the way these things are going um i just i have a feeling that you're gonna God get a golf club to the head at the start of the game well i just, i know not necessarily that but i do feel like it's going to be a bit controversial and a bit divisive <laughs> i don't think it's going to be plain and simple possibly um, just saying. That's a li- little prediction, but for me, that one because it's only the name, it's only the subtitle, and it's like, <laughs> ooh, that's that's a dangerous subtitle we've gotten up. This is interesting. Yeah, right, right. So for me, it's it's that. How about you? The, other, the others, oh, I kind sorry. of know what's going on. Sorry, yeah, no, sorry. You know what's going on? Tell well, us. Like as in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hear what you're saying. It's like it's just been announced, and on that alone, you're like, "Oh, I want to buy it." <laughs> you're like, I haven't seen anything. <laughs> um, Adam, which of those games are you most anticipating at the moment? I was initially, um, it was initially Halo Infinite, until I saw the gameplay. Right. Um, and I'm hoping that that will change now that they've been delayed, and I, it looks like they're going to. Uh, put a little bit extra work in to optimize better for Series X and stuff like that. But I was really interested to see what they do with Halo just because it's been so long since they've done a, a new entry. And I thought this was going to be the God of War 2018 approach to, to Halo. I was I was really looking forward to that. Yeah, you know? like a, re, a revamp um, of, of kinds. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, what's nice about Halo Infinite is that it does look like it's kind of going back to the first one. Yeah. But I don't know if going back is necessarily the right direction. I would love to see them do something like new and different. Like I think three four three are just so concerned about being like what would Bungie do, you know, that kind of a thing, as opposed to how about just make the Halo you want to make, you know? Right. Um So I'd love I'd love to see that turn back around just because I want to be I wanna fucking get some usage out of my Xbox, like <laughs> you know. Um but I wasn't really like I am really looking forward to Resident Evil Eight. I don't think I'm going to play it, but it looks deadly. <laughs> what um, the hell? Yeah, <laughs> probably going to. I'm probably going to be like Resi Two. It's just going to sit there on my shelf and I'm going to. Go admire, wow, that's amazing. Admire <laughs> it's like it's like the ring, you know, the, the clip of the ring. You just don't want to watch it because you. Don't watch it, man. Die. Um, but Horizon and God of War, those were two where I'm like, obviously they're coming along. Yeah. But I didn't really like, uh, like yes, I'm gonna play them. But there wasn't that much excitement for them until I used the Dual Sense. Now I am so excited, uh, specifically for God of War as well. Um, so that's my most anticipated now, and it's I think it's so interesting that a new piece of hardware like that, that the controller can completely change. Because I think if it's coming out on PS4 as well. You see, I, I, I've, I have a feeling it's going to come out on PS4 and PS5. So right. technically, it'll be a PS4 game with some enhancements. 
Okay. Um, and that had me a bit kind of, okay, well, it's probably just going to be the same thing, just different story. But the dual sense is really going to be, like, really change how, how, how you interact with that game. So I can only imagine what it's going to be like throwing the axe with the triggers. But the, um, I, I just think about how the haptic feedback will enhance the performances. Like, there's moments in the first God of War or the fourth God of War, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, eighth God of War. <laughs> <laughs> where, you know, obviously Kratos is like, he's getting really, really kind of angry and he has to hold it back a bit. Yes. I mean, you yeah, could yeah. probably you could probably feel his heart elevation through the haptic feedback, you know? Oh man, yeah, I, I, I don't, I, yeah. What the hell's going to happen? Like, <laughs> what the... Yeah, so I, I think the, the dual sense is going to really just elevate that game. Um, and I can't wait to experience that. So God of War. Yeah, I like on that list for me. It does come down to those three: Horizon, God of War, and Resident Evil. Um, I don't have a Nintendo console, and I currently don't have an Xbox. So, um, but even at that, like the reason I don't have those, because I buy consoles for the games. I don't buy, you know, it's cool if they have awesome features. But I buy them for the games I'm wanting to play on them. And I haven't felt the need to buy an Xbox. Like, none of those games have made me want to go out and buy one. And Zelda alone, I, I, I think it's awesome, but it's, it's not enough to make me buy a Nintendo console. Um, Resident Evil, I think, looks really, really interesting and terrifying. And I think graphically, it's going to be incredibly impressive. I'm looking forward to seeing it, but I'm not like, I, I can wait for that game. Like, I, I really can wait. I'm not like, yeah. you know, like waiting to pre-order or anything like that. Yeah. Horizon and God of War, in a very similar way, those are two games I knew were coming and also could wait for. In a similar way to, I remember like The Last of Us Part 2, even though like how much I love The Last of Us, I was like, I can wait for The Last of Us Part 2. If they delay it another year, it's like, that's okay. I, like I can genuinely wait. Versus like Final Fantasy VII Remake, I was like, please give it to me right now. And any bit of footage that comes out, I need to look at it right now. And if there's a demo, I'm playing it right now. You know, like, like it was a different thing. It was like, I cannot sit still until I have it. Um, whereas with these things, I, f I can wait. And I'm not like, like overly <laughs> anticipating them. But of the two, I got to say, God of War, even though I haven't seen any footage, it's just yeah. the way they framed that. And just where, how impactful that first story was. And you just know that any little small things that maybe didn't gel well in the first one will have been cleaned up for the next one. Like, you know, it's going to play better, right? Yeah, like the and... the it, the it fucking world tree thing. Like, you're not going to have to run around in a circle for the door to load. You just have to, like, walk through the portal and you're in the next realm. Yeah, like, think about shit like that. And oh, I think so, you're right. The juice, the juice sense changes it because you're going to feel the yeah. resistance of, like, loading up that axe and then throwing it and feeling it come back to you and the little sound effects that are going to come out of the microphone and stuff. Um, and then graphically, it's going to look even better than the first one. The first one already looked amazing. So it, it is those two. Um, I, I am also really excited for Horizon. And I have said before that I think the sequel is going to be better than the first game. Mm, yeah. Think, and it yeah. looks very impressive what they've shown. Um, but again, I can wait for them. But I just think that God of War is going to do some stuff that really surprises Whereas Horizon is just going to be a, a bigger, better game than the first, but not necessarily like do shit that like you know we're all going to be sitting and going, what the hell did they just do? It's just going to be like, wow, that was amazing. Um, but could be wrong, you know. We'll see what happens. I am definitely getting both those games. I'll see you about Resi. <laughs> um, I'll get Resi and tell you how it is. Yeah. No, I, you know what? I, would I hope like, they implement like the VR it. into it again. It looks, I'd say it will. I'd say it will. I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know how you will, can. Yeah. You have an easier time playing it in VR sure. and not. You know, it's not an easier time. It's not at all an easier time. I still, to this day, don't understand how you can play Resi 7 and not Resi 2. Honestly, 7 is scarier. Ah, 7 is. 7 is definitely more. scarier, like, hands down. I didn't have an easy time, Chris. And it's not <laughs> as if I want to fucking go and do that again. Yeah, yeah. Did you not hear what I just said about Resi 8? Like, I'm not getting it. <laughs> No, I am getting it. I'm not playing it. <laughs> I'm going to support the fuck out of them, but there's no way I'm touching that. But graphically, it looks very impressive. Yeah. But they all, that also looks like they're going to do something. Like, they're doing something weird with Chris Redfield. 
Yes. And I wonder if it's like a Jill Valentine thing, or is it like a he's just, or is it just enough is enough? Fuck this, and he's just gonna end it all. Yeah, now. May, maybe I maybe they're gonna the do like approach, a and not the Jill Valentine approach. Yeah. 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 Like, like I so don't maybe, want it to be brainwashed or something. Like we we've we've seen him be the war hero now, so maybe now we're seeing him be the more. Does seem very out of his sort of character. Thing. Like I do remember, like there's yeah, a there's, there's someone I know, and um, they're a huge Resi fan. And when that trailer released, they were straight to Twitter at Capcom. This is not Chris Redfield, <laughs> right? <laughs> you I know, know? Yeah, yeah. like, and this is the kind of thing. But like, I suppose we're seeing it out of context, and I, they want us. They want everyone to talk about it. Yeah. They're not showing everything. The thing that I find weird about it is that they did frame that trailer as... Because remember just before they showed any footage, they had like something written like, this is the end of his story or something, or his story comes to an end. Something like that, because I remember yeah. like people... You know, if you watch reaction videos, I remember seeing them and, and people going, okay, so this must be a franchise that we know, because you don't write something like that if it's something you don't yeah. know, right? So they were try, trying to guess what it was before the footage came up. And... um it's weird to me that if this is Chris Redfield's last story, or so they're saying, like kind of like an Uncharted Four st- mm-hmm. thing, you're not playing as him. That's kind of a weird choice. Like I, I get the whole first person Ethan thing. Um, it worked out well in Seven, and visually, well, unless you play as the two of them, maybe you do. Because but you it did just... play as Chris in Seven in a DLT. You did, yeah. But I always, I feel like if that's the case. If you play as Chris, and if it is genuinely his last Resi game, then it should play like Resi 2. Mm. I don't think you should play as Chris in first person if it's his last game. Just because of the, the lineage of where it started. You know, he he was one of the two protagonists of the first ever game, and it played in third person. Could, could you imagine him, then. If, they, if they did do one, though? Let's, let's say it wasn't this one. But they were going to do one of the last one as Chris or last one as as Leon or something. If they really went old school and made a fixed camera angle with the door loading screen things, no, that would suck, Eric. I would that'd be a mess, man. It'd be so good. <laughs> no, and and it'd be all be degraded pixel- all the way yeah, back yeah, down yeah. to <laughs> be all pixelated. It's just that and when you see like... the graphics of Resi Two and even Resi Three Remake, it's like like they're so impressive. So, no, nothing against the first person approach that they've gone for. It really just depends on what story they tell in this. I think um, it's just a little observation that I'm making. I just feel like if it is Chris's last outing, it'll feel a bit weird that you're not playing as him and you're not kind of playing in his traditional style. Yeah, I just, I, I, I yeah. Normally, see, with Seven, the reason they went with first person was for the VR. Yeah, and I'm glad they did for that so as well. I, the series. I, I just hope that they do support it with eight as well otherwise yeah what's the purpose of being first person yeah especially when you've done two games in the meantime in third person and and successfully you know what i mean like they they look great they play great they're scary they're atmospheric you know it perfectly blends action and horror in the way that the series started um so yeah there has to be a reason for going first person other than just the fact that you're playing as ethan again and that's the way you played as him um, so I agree Ethan, with that. Ethan has no face. <laughs> Ethan has no face. Yeah, we're just like we just don't have a design for him, so it's just cheaper. He's if no we... body. He's just he's he's, he's two you. two knees and shoulders. That's it. Yeah, that's terrifying. Right? That's, <laughs> that's that's <laughs> scarier than the zombies. <laughs> what the hell? Um. Okay, so we're all uh, anticipating God of War, uh, Ragnarok, uh, the most yeah. out of that list. Um. I haven't looked at the comments or anything on this tweet because I don't want to kind of be kind of guessing based on that. I'd rather just kind of speculate. Um, what do you think people on that list are probably most anticipating? God of War. You think God of War as well? Yeah. The love for that game is ridiculous. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, like it's even yeah. it, more than I can. That I thought, like that game is way more successful than I thought it would be. You know, yeah. Because there's a lot in it that's very, um, very mature. Not in a mature content kind of way, but mature, 
like dealing with a son and stuff like that. And uh, but I, I, yeah, I think I said that last time, wasn't it? That like last time we were talking about the game was that the game was that more mature. Like the the previous games were like mature content, but really younger people would love them. But now that their audience have grown up, the game has yeah been yeah it's, it's mature, like mature. So they they've matured themselves. Like <laughs> it, yes, yeah, it's, yeah. It's weird. It's it's like a. It, you know when I always watch like a, like a Christopher. I always you know Christopher Nolan movies, mm. where it's like everything in this is suitable for a young person to watch because there's nothing graphical in it. Yes, but the concepts are so far uh, so far <laughs> advanced that anyone under the age limit of the movie is going to be like, what? <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. even it's people like... over the age limit for the movie are like, what? So it's like you would show a twelve-year-old Blade before you'd ever show them Inception. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Even though Blade is eighteens. <laughs> yeah, and I think God of War is is like it's touching on like it's like you would have need to have experienced it or, um, or at least understand the kind of connection that he has with yeah. with his son here. Um, it's yeah, it's mature in that sense. Yes, yeah. And yeah. I guess I underestimated how mature gamers were. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or they just didn't give a fuck and they just loved the combat because the combat is solid. Combat's pretty pretty badass. Yeah. Eric, what do you think? Uh I was I was actually initially gonna say Elden Ring, considering how how popular um George R. R. Martin is among people and how popular rogue style games are. Okay, but it's not going. To, I don't think it's going to be a rogue style game. That. So yeah, do we know that? Has anyone said that? No, like I that... mean, we can assume it's soul style because of its art style. No, because it's made by From Software. Maybe the same people. Like. Oh, now I have you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it could be. I mean, I'm between those two because honestly, yeah, Adam does make a good point with the with the love for God War. So I'd be between those two. I think before we saw any footage, if this was just a list of games that we knew are coming, like they're slated, mm-hmm. and uh, we hadn't seen any footage of any of them, I'd have said Halo Infinite. Uh, right? yeah, yeah. Because I there was a huge I think that want gameplay didn't for do this it next Halo it. game. Having seen that footage and then just the reaction to a logo. I think it's definitely God of War. <laughs> I think yeah. I think people are more excited to see the next um, chapter in Kratos and Atreus' story, particularly based on how God of War ended. Because if you think about it, the first God of War, it's a relationship-building game. It's not hugely eventful. There's great moments in it, mm-hmm. but you could sum it up with just, you know, a father and a son go Goes to, on deliver, a journey. <laughs> to deliver ashes. And at yeah. the end, they, they do. And that's it, really. Yeah, but God of War is like our it's modern... It's hinting at bigger things. Yeah, it's like, it is a modern kind of Greeks, you know, like those Greek stories, kind of, where... In a way, yeah. In those kind or of stories. Norse. <laughs> or Norse, <laughs> if you want to go with that. But we don't know much about Norse, do we? It's more kind of, as opposed well. to... Yeah, but like, <laughs> you've you've got like one person's kind of interpretation of it, as opposed to, isn't the, yeah, yeah. the Greek um, stories of like, you have... Even someone just trying to get to Troy, but then they just end up on... It's like, that's the journey. It's just like, I'm just trying to get to Troy, or I'm trying to get back to, from Troy. Yeah, and yeah. On, on that journey, it's like all this shit happens, and that's kind of this God of War story, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, it's like, you're trying to do a pretty simple task, and then... Yeah. Or it sounds like a simple task, and then all this crazy shit happens. But what I mean is, like, there's no, like, big, like, like some evil plot or world-ending event that needs to be stopped or any of that. Like, so it is actually... And I'm I'm actually I'm not like criticizing the game, but it is pretty uneventful when you look at it in that in that lens. And so the fact that this yeah, one's called Ragnarok, a... you can only imagine what they're what they're kind of planning like. Yeah, mm. yeah like the first the first one's not a, it, it's I think it's not an MCU film. It would be what Adam was saying, like a Christopher Nolan style film. Like it's it is a simple concept, but then it's just the the editing and writing style of it makes it way more impactful. Well, an MCU style film it would be that there has to be a world ending threat or and there has to be yeah. all these slapstick comedy moments in it and stuff like has to be kind of light and joyful. But then Christopher Nolan's is like, let's deconstruct a character or deconstruct the society that we're, we're looking at. It's kind of more 
what they went oh. with this one. Yeah, well, yeah, that's a, yeah, they did actually in a way. I suppose they, 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 they yeah, constructed they Kratos. Deconstructed, yeah, they deconstructed, they deconstructed the, the entire... angriest, most like bravado character in gaming. Like, <laughs> well, not just that, but they deconstructed the um, the war between the giants and the gods. Because obviously, in all the stories, the gods would have been the the heroes yeah. fighting against the oh the evil the evil giants, and then they kind of went, well, let's just twist it on its head, make all the gods dickheads, and yeah, they were. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose in, okay. in God of War, the gods have to be dickheads, don't they? Because that's his that's his whole thing. Oh, yeah. 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 He hates them, doesn't he? He hates gods. Yeah. Like, oh, I mean, if I'm you, do look, at, if, you, are, if you do look at the Greek mythology, though, all the gods are dickheads. They, <laughs> they were. They really were. Dickheads. They're tyrants. Yeah. But yeah, no, they were. Another, I suppose he's a bit like Blade in that way, where he's uh, he, he almost hates the thing he hates that he is. Kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a, I always think that's a very interesting character thing. If like there's someone who kind of it's like, uh, do you remember like The Last Samurai, even? Yeah, and like he's a very damaged individual. And oh, you know, right, like he's yeah, a point he, where the guy says to him, like. Is, what's his, what's the other? I can't remember the other guy's name. Algren? But it's like, no, what Algren. is it? Uh, Cutter, Custer, Cutter, no, Custard. Not, no, no, Custard. No, Custard is mentioned. To work for General Custer. Yeah, but that character is not Custer. But that, but anyway, that character says to Tom Cruise, like, um, you know, what is it about your? No, own he is people? Custer. That is General. No, he's Custer. not. No, he's not. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yes, I'm looking this. That up. is General Custer. No, it's not. It's not General Custer. Because they have, he has a whole conversation with Katsumoto and talking about how he worked for a General Custer. And then Katsumoto is like, um, you know, I've heard of this man. But it's not the fella. It's not that guy. It is. That guy was under General Custer as well. No, because General Custer is a real person. They couldn't change how he died. Yeah, no, like he was. Oh, yeah, because that movie's so accurate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. Colonel Bagley. <laughs> His name is Colonel Bagley. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's right. But yeah, no, sorry. I just, I love that uh, thing where you have a character who just kind of, they just, they hate themselves really and feel like themselves are a projection of, you know, everyone around them who's yeah. like them. It's just an interesting um, approach to telling a character story. But um, anyway, so of that list, <laughs> um, that's another topic, breaking down video game characters. Yeah. Character deconstructions. Um, I don't so think that we're list, in yeah, any we, way qualified we're all to do that. Oh, yeah, we are. Oh, yeah, we are. No, we're not. Um, <laughs> of that list, we're anticipating God of War, and we feel like the world are as well, so it probably will be, you know, if they do an announcement, it probably will be God of War Ragnarok. But is there a game that's not there, or even a couple of games not there, that you are anticipating even more than that or if not more than that that you just want to say yeah i'm also anticipating these games um yeah, I mean, er- eric me like you know I mean? obviously anticipating don't say obviously because with you nothing is fucking <laughs> <laughs> that's why i say obviously <laughs> i want to throw that curveball Maybe you're gonna come in uh, the mass effect legendary edition are you anticipating that more? Look the way you said obviously, and that is not what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, thought that, I actually really thought that would have been obvious. Okay. Which one did you think I was going to say? Uh, Cyberpunk? Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Who knows what you would say? <laughs> um, just that before oh, you I... go on about it, are you anticipating that more than God of War? Uh, at the moment, yeah, because I know... Hey. At the moment, yeah, because I, I know what I'm expecting... But at the same time, I'm like, this is this is going to be improved upon. So I want to see how they've improved it. It'd be hilarious if so it was you... only for the next gen. I I would I would generally buy the next gen just for it. <laughs> yeah, I think it should be. Fuck it. I know it's not. Oh. I... Eric, you're getting you already. Ha- <laughs> it's on the way. You have it. <laughs> you oh have... no, but I thought Adam meant. Next gen Xbox. That we, yeah, that's what you said, isn't it? That is not what I said. No, he just oh. said the next gen. Oh no, I thought you meant next. For some reason, I just imagined. I just finished the rest of your sentence for you in my head. Right. In that you. He means Xbox, right? When he says next gen, he means Xbox. He means Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you hope it has that the original trilogy does not have? Okay. Uh, what do you hope it has better graphics first? 
No more yeah. elevator rides. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Jeez. at least faster elevator rides. <laughs> well, they'll definitely be faster. <laughs> yeah, you just get the elevator. Even, even the space travel will be faster. You, you get in the elevator, and then you're just on the Normandy. You're like, I didn't even... That's not even where I wanted to go. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> uh, uh, better better graphics. Uh, I know this, this is a long shot, but for the first game to have the gameplay mechanics of the other two games... Because the first one does have terrible gameplay. Yeah, that would be amazing. That would take much more of an overhaul than than just a simple remaster, I suppose. And maybe some better customization options. Oh, like for suits and stuff? Like well, cosmetics? For, for your character. When you're actually constructing your character's face. To actually have some better options. That would be cool. That will be cool. None of was... what you just asked for is going to be in it. <laughs> oh god, hey, it's, it's nice to it's definitely nice to a pipe wish. dream. It's, it's like it's not even going to have better be better graphics. <laughs> no, be it'll, be, a, it'll graphics. be better resolution and frame rate, and that's yeah, that's yeah. about it. I am, but it'll I, be I three mean, times I'm... the install size. <laughs> yeah, I will buy a day one. I am oh, yeah. looking forward to that game. Yeah, um, I hope, and also hopefully, it probably will, but hopefully comes with all the DLC, just already. Started. I would imagine it will. Yeah. I'd be yeah, really surprised if it doesn't come with absolutely everything. Or you'll only get the first game, and you have to, like, purchase... Pay the, for the other two. Pay for everything else. Or, yeah, but, well, do was, was what Destiny 2 does, where it installs the expansion on, but you still have to buy it. Or wasn't the so crash... No, it. Spyro was... Uh, if you bought, the, I think it was the Spyro trilogy. If you bought that right, only the first game is on the disc, and you have to you get a digital, you get a code to download the other two. What which the is hell? fucking why, bollocks. Why the hell did they do that? So anyone that like, because I mean, there's a load of people actually that don't connect their consoles online. They they don't. They actually play them completely offline. Yeah. And uh, therefore, they couldn't download the fucking like they bought this like 60 quid game that says there's the three games on it but actually you have to why did they do that i i guess they just assumed everyone had the internet like why is that even a good decision to do like why why would you do that it is stupid that's ridiculous yeah that's ridiculous (laughs) is it so that you can't and that's probably that that sounds like a bioware thing to do you know so i'd say that's what's gonna fucking happen you get the fucking game, I don't and think so. I don't think it'll have that. only the first one on it, and you have to download the other two. No, it'll, it'll actually you'll buy it, and it will only have that uh, mobile Mass Effect Infiltrator game. That's yeah. it. <laughs> I Which think is gone, like, by the way. Um, you can't get that anymore. I think it'll be like the yeah. Nathan Drake collection, though. I think it'll just put a disc in, and the three games will be on it. Hopefully, like a menu to go across each game. That's what I hope. I, I mean, that. I mean, like, there's, oh. there's so much I could hope that they would add into it, like, but I I'm, just, I'm I just happy that it's coming out for next gen. The artwork for it was amazing. Oh, yeah. The artwork for it is yeah. sick. I think it's fucking class. Uh, Adam, is there a game that you are anticipating that's not on that list? Final Fantasy Seven Remake Part 2. Oh, jeez. That's way further than... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough, okay. I mean, yes, that's well, the most anticipated... Well, they've got fucking Elden Ring on it. I imagine they Final Fantasy yeah. Seven is going to come out before that one. Yeah, in that case, why? Oh, yeah, right. why? Why is there a Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel and uh, not a Final Fantasy VII remake sequel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I wasn't gonna say that one only because I'm kind of thinking of like the next year, but that is the most anticipated thing ever. Um, uh, for me, uh, if that could come now uh, instead of everything else, that'd be great. But uh, I understand that we're gonna be waiting a while. Like we're gonna get Final Fantasy 16 before we get Final Fantasy VII remake part two. Yeah. Yep. I, um, I think they're different groups, aren't they? They're different they teams. Are. Yeah, yeah, they're different I teams. Imagine, yeah, I so. well, in terms of next year, like what's there on the list is kind of all I'm looking forward to next year. Um, all right, okay. But thinking down the line, I'm just like, yeah. Like the minute I cleared the first part, I was like, just give me part two. Give me yeah, something, absolutely. you know what I mean? Like I'm so, more so than any other game that I've played this generation. Mm. That's the one where I'm like, I I need the sequel and then like now, yeah. And uh, I want it straight away. And I am really interested to. Oh, I suppose. I suppose the other things I'm like kind of anticipating are still rumors. They're they're not like 
uh, official. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> like those type of games, I'm like, yeah, happens. Please happen. No, no, but uh, please, looking good, forward to yeah. see what Kojima does next. Yeah, I initially didn't give a fuck, but now again after playing Dual with Sense. the Dual Sense, I can only imagine what he can do with that. That was another thing actually. I, I was when we were talking about Playroom, Astro's Playroom. Oh yeah, oh, my yeah. favorite like Easter eggs in that game was uh, when you find the PS2 memory card in it. All see, right, see that one? I haven't found that one. See, there's like loads of little kind of small descriptions uh, under each artifact that you find. Like for example, the eye toy. Uh, like if you find if you find that, the description is uh, keeps your granny entertained for hours or something like that. You know, right, it's like right, really right. fucking good shit. But um, memory card two uh, for the PS2. The description was uh, protects your data even from the most powerful of psychics. I thought that was so fucking clever. That's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> That's so good. But yeah, I I, I just because what what he was able to do with the originals uh, in terms of the hardware um, really changed the game, and I can only imagine what he can do with dual sets. I feel like as well like his game, his games haven't been as interesting i think once hardware has plateaued you know what i mean right right like, he didn't really bring anything that interesting to the ps3 no or definitely not to the ps4 you know like that's stranding no. although it's an interesting game it's just not necessarily like I mean, it's not that you couldn't do something like this before, really. Like, obviously, graphically, it wouldn't be as good and all that kind of stuff. But um, there's, like, nothing in the game, basically. You know, there's barely any enemies. So <laughs> you'd, you'd definitely be able to load that up on a, on a previous gen at that time. Yeah. Um, so, like, we haven't seen the advancements that he would have done, like, with the Dual Shock. And then with the PS2, the way they had the pressure-sensitive pressure face buttons, uh, and then with the PS3 was like, well, like, he didn't do anything really with the PS3, I, I think, apart from just glorify the Blu-ray. I think and that's all he kind of well, did. You were you were able to you were able to shake the controller if you wanted the camo to disappear off your Octo camo suit. It's yeah. true, man. That's true. Yeah, that definitely felt and like uh, you were Sony able to was during, just like, during okay, cutscenes. you have to use six axes in your game yeah. somewhere. And they're just like taking it off. But I genuinely think that the dual sense is is far beyond a gimmick. It's not a gimmick. It genuinely elevates the experience of, yeah. of gameplay. Yeah. Um and I can only like especially if he wanted to do something along the lines of like Silent Hill. Uh this oh, PT man. thing. It, That'd like, be another game that just stay on the shelf there. Uh, I go, Wow, thank you. Like he'll like, make your he'll make your ga- controller feel haunted. He'll make me feel haunted. Yeah. I won't like, want to do anything ever. I'll leave the probably, house. You probably figure out some way for like Pyramid Head to come out of the TV. Fuck. I'm surprised he has. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what is? I'm surprised he hasn't touched VR. Yeah. That is surprising. I wonder, is it something that he's still kind of figuring out? Like, I suppose he needs to be inspired, doesn't he? Realistically, like, he wants to be inspired by something to create something. It's a real shame, like, that Stranding was, uh, had a lot of cool ideas and concepts, but you could tell, like, his heart was in that Silent Hills project, you know, because he brought, obviously, everyone from it over. Yeah. It's a real, because he was obviously inspired to push the technology you know uh to lim- like even like in, in pt alone i'd say i, I would actually say pt is where he kind of did a lot moment. for the PS4. that was his moment because you know you even you had to talk to the microphone or you had to you, you know there was communicate with people across the world yeah there was lots of little things that that console could do that no other console could yeah. do yet you know that he did use and it's just a shame that a project got scrapped under him and that he was obviously at a point where he was like, well, I have all these people now, and I, oh, I need to make a game. And maybe Death Stranding was just another idea that he had, or maybe he twisted some of the ideas that he had from Silent Hills into something new. But, you know, because it came, like, it was announced quite soon after. And it's like, yeah. you know, how much writing happened and all this kind of stuff, and, you know, how different is it? 
Um, mm-hmm. Like, obviously, it's very different. I don't think a Sand Hills would have looked anything like that, but just saying. Um, like, maybe the whole invisible enemies thing and stuff was something that was going to be in Sand Hills, or, you know, who knows? And like, you know, maybe it's. Well, it's that, impressive if you if you, if you played know. Death Stranding. It's impressive how taught out it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, Absolutely. And it's like, how did he fucking come up with all this in like what felt like no time at all? You really did feel like that, yeah, yeah. So but, I, I imagine it probably was a concept in the back of his head somewhere. Must it have. must have been, yeah. you know, like, and and it was something that was just shelved. Yeah. Um, but I do believe that, yeah, I think the game mechanic side of it is probably something that he just utilized and his team utilized from what they learned from. MGS5 and where they were going with maybe Silent Hills. It yeah. Just kind of, let's just take that then and uh, try and Frankenstein it with his previous ideas, maybe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So for me, uh, yeah. If we if we could say totally down the line, anytime Five Five Seven Rainbow Part Two is the most anticipated game. Uh, yeah. Obviously, it was like a. It was like fucking watching lord of the rings for the first time it really is like lord of the rings i really feel like that like it's the one kind of movie series i feel like i can compare it with because it's not a complete story and it's such a to be continued thing but it's like you know when the lord of the rings ends and you're like no 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 keep going come on keep going you know what? let's yeah. put on the next one come on let's keep yeah, yeah. going okay if you kind of like if you watch the lord of the rings you end up doing a marathon and even if you don't <laughs> do it day, you might go right well tomorrow then i'm putting on the next one like, do you think they'll it, do like a prologue for part two uh, yeah, I that do. Would be so fucking... Well, it's gonna be neat. Then, then we were like, oh, I wonder what they're gonna do for the next prologue. <laughs> I really think that they're gonna open with Nibelheim. Yeah, I like, really do that entire and then, scenario. And then maybe cut to like once you do Nibelheim, because you could do that as both a tutorial and a prologue to the sequel yeah. game, right? And then as soon as it ends, they're all already standing in camp. They're already in the inn. You've skipped a bit of time. Yeah, but once you leave camp. Something will happen on the road at Yuffie. Yeah, that's what that's what I think is gonna happen, and I think it's gonna be great. And I can't fucking wait to see the Midgar Zolum. Holy shit! Holy shit! Yeah, oh, just thinking about like the mist, the like misty forest. I guess like I know it wasn't a forest in the original game, but I can imagine them doing that. Well, it's just I like, remember what I was saying earlier about the 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 serpent from Sekiro. Yeah. Right? I'm just thinking of shit. Like I'm thinking like that, imagine yeah. what this serpent is gonna be like if it's like chasing you as you're running on a chocobo away from it or something. Like what the fuck? Nah, yeah, no, nah, you you still have to do the little wait and watch it like and time it right and you'll run across. That's all. Yeah, 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 you'll go. No, nah, fuck this. I'm not catching a chocobo. I'm just gonna wait till he's up in the corner and go, 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 go. <laughs> Actually, that's probably where they'll open up that whole chocobo kind of breeding mini game thing. And uh, okay. I can imagine that being kind of a pretty fun side quest, I guess. I'm just excited to see, like, like where's All of it. where's it going to end? You know, will we get to see Cosmo Canyon, and what's that going to be like? Um, will we meet the rest of the party now? Like, I feel like we will. I feel like they need to I get you so, yeah. the rest of the party in the next game. So I can't wait to see Vincent. I can't wait to see Sid. I really actually can't wait to see Sid because Vincent we have seen portrayed really well pretty much every time he's on screen out anyway. Sid was kind of like just kind of funny in Advent Children and had very little to do with anything else. Mm. But when you meet Sid in the original game, he's quite abusive. In yeah, fact, he's and, a and he's an bastard. asshole. He is a real bastard. And I really hope they play that up to the point where you're like, I'm not sure I like this guy. Uh, because it'll make it a little bit. Tragic. At, a first, at first, I thought they were going to shy away from that kind of stuff. But having played the first one. It's like well, they're really fucking staying true to the characters, so yeah, I'm really excited to see what they do with Sid and stuff. And then God only knows what cats it's gonna be like. I wonder if they're going I... to carry over your. <laughs> Are they gonna carry over your save file like Mass Effect style? Like, will you will you continue with the level you're at? Yeah, well, a lot I'm of on, like all the weapons. weapons. I'm on level no, they can't do that because I'm on level 99. Well, you gotta. I get level ninety nine. It's level fifty. Is where to uh, Either way, I'm the highest level. That's a bit high. Well, yeah, but that's the thing. It's like, like I would have thought, no, you can't carry it over, because how do you balance it all out and all? And maybe you do a scale or whatever. But then the other thing is, if you can't carry it over, why cap it at level fifty? Yeah, and it'd be just a shame that you're after collecting all these weapons and. But then, like, it's like that YouTube comment said, like, Yuffie stealing your stuff is the best way to start you back at square one or something. Yeah. 
and then having to, yeah. maybe like a side mission is going collecting all your stuff again because she's already sold it off or something. I don't know, but it could be like so. There is a way of getting your gear back, but you just can't have it at the start of the game. As well as getting new gear as the game goes on. Yeah, it'd be a clever way. It'd be a clever way of doing that. I don't know how they do it for the third part, but. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like, okay, there's only so many times you can go, I lost well, all my gear. <laughs> well, Cat Set steals all your gear for the third part. <laughs> yeah, throws it with the keystone at the Shinner Chopper. Take the fucking shit! <laughs> <laughs> Chucky chucks a bunch of swords at the helicopter, fucking takes it down. <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> with the megaphone, I'm sorry! <laughs> <laughs> I just can't wait. So that one is my most anticipated game. But for next year, and even more so than the games that are on, even more so than God of War, which might change once I see an actual God of War trailer. I can't help myself. I don't know why I'm so invested in it. Gotham Knights. Gotham Knights, yeah. I don't know what the hell is going on, but I keep seeing shit about it, and I'm like, I really want to play that game. I really want to play it. I'm even, having played Legends, Ghost of Tsushima Legends, I'm even just really excited about, like, the co-op aspect of it like i know eric you're planning on getting it like just the idea of like playing as two of batman's you know sidekicks and then scoping out a room or an alley in a city or like just scoping out gotham and going right let's see how we're going to take out these goons like mm. but then also i've i've watched a lot of the interviews with the guys who are making it and uh they've just talked a lot about how there's a huge mystery element to it and that's really like there's a like as much as there's a lot of like that free play stuff, there's a there is a huge story that they're trying to tell, um, and they are really inspired by those like the long Halloween sort of noir detective stories, and I'm like I love that side of Batman, so that's really gonna yeah. work for me, and then also I think it's gonna have a lot of replayability, because of the fact that it's like okay, I want to play it first on my own. So that I don't miss any dialogue and experience the whole thing. Then it's like, okay, now I'd like to play like the whole game in co-op. And then also you could go, because they say you could play as any one of the four characters at any point in the game. So it's like, okay, what if I play the whole game like this person? And then what if I play the whole game as this person? Or, you know, what if I try out doing this mission with this person? I just think it's got to be like really fun to jump in and play. The only thing I'm worried about it is that I think because of that, like because you could play as any of the characters for the whole game, and because any of it is co-op, even if it has an interesting mystery element, there's definitely got to be some sacrifices in narrative storytelling. Yeah. That's the only thing I'm not too I excited. also think that it's not going to necessarily feel very next-gen at all. Right, yeah. As a yeah. game. Like, compared to some of the other ones. Like, I think, like, Resident Evil 8 will. will. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, Ragnarok and Forbidden West will have elements that will step it above uh previous gen but yeah. i i don't think gotham knights is going to have anything other than no, just resolution yeah and i even feel um that by the end of the year right by the end of next year like i could already make a prediction that god of war will be the better game <laughs> mm. and that you know, afterwards it'll be like, oh yeah, that should be a game, game of the year or whatever. And it's like, God, like, no, no, not even nominated or what? Like, it could be like that. But it'll be in best action, maybe. I can't help my, you know, you just can't help your, you're just like, oh, I really want to play that game. I really just want it now. I can't help well, it. Not every game has to be a game of the year contender. No. You know, for you to have a good bit of what good Eric crack. loves, a good bit of crack. Yeah, a bit good of crack. crack. Like, as long it's as good, good crack. crack. You know? good yeah. crack. <laughs> Not yeah. better than spending like sixty, it's your, seventy it's your, euros uh, on something that's just good crack. Yeah, it's your Call of Duty, you know. Yeah, it, it's your. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be that low. That's <laughs> <laughs> nah, not a joke. I enjoy. It's your Call of FIFA, Duty. you know. It's your guilty pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is true. Anything Batman related kind of is a guilty pleasure. Well, it's not guilty. I'm happy to like it, but like, it's like as soon don't as you slap. Guilty. Well, so as soon as you slap Batman on, I'm like, yeah, buy it. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, it's going to be great. And I was like, it could not be. Like, it could be terrible. But <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, look at that. It's Batman, though. It's, it's Batman. Batman. <laughs> it's like, yeah. It's like, even if Batman's dead, ah, oh, it's got a Bat logo. Ah, oh, deadly. Fuck. It's clap. <laughs> but anyway, those are um, our thoughts on most anticipated games for the, the coming year and beyond. And also some of our thoughts on the game Hades and the game Spider-Man Miles Morales. But now we'd love to hear what other people think about both of those games and then also which game they 
are anticipating coming in the future, whether it's next year or beyond. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to jump into the comments. Let us know all your thoughts on all of those things and which game you're looking forward to. Um, and also, it'd be great that if you enjoyed this, give us a thumbs up. Hit subscribe so you know when we're putting out new content and click that notification bell. But if you listen to us on audio platforms, you can touch base with us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Brothers Take. So let us know which games you're looking forward to and also how are you finding Hades and Spider-Man Mods Morales if you've played them. Uh, that's all for today's episode. Thank you very much for listening. And we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye now. <laughs>